Hi, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome to more beekeeping basics. Okay, so we had a fantastic question sent in asking about beekeeping records and what I use for maintaining my beekeeping records. So today I thought I'd uh, take a few minutes just to show you what I used to use when we first started beekeeping and how we've progressed and what we use now. If you're new to the channel, you're very welcome. Please hit the subscribe button. We've got plenty of videos for you to see. We're building up a really good back catalogue of information and we'll be releasing lots more videos over the coming winter months and into the new season. If you've got any questions or comments that you'd like to share, please leave them down below. And as usual, I promise to answer all of the comments that are left and uh, we'll leave in the description section all the information about anything that we're looking at today that you might want to follow up on. So let's take a look at some beekeeping records. The important thing about beekeeping records is that they're your records. It's information that you need to help you, remind you of how you're keeping your bees, what your bees have been doing, whether they're performing well, whether you've got problems with them, and really just information that will help remind you um, what your bees are up to every time you go into your hive and inspect your bees. So when I first started beekeeping, I only had maybe half a dozen beehives, and it was very simple to keep very basic records. And we used to write those down on a card and keep them inside the hive. So we've got a stack of supers here, and we'll just show you the kind of records that we used to keep uh, when we first started, and uh, then we'll move on to what we do now and how we uh, use a spreadsheet to keep all of the records for our beekeeping. Okay, so to keep records very quickly and easily, uh, if you've just got one or two beehives, you need uh, a sandwich bag or a plastic bag, a card to write the records on, and a pen. And you leave those in the bag under the roof, pop them on top of the crime board, and then you just pop the roof on top. And you can leave them there after every inspection so that you know where the records are. And as I said earlier, the records are really anything that you want to write down to give you information each time you inspect. So let's just give you an example of the kind of records that we keep. Let's make believe that this is a colony that we're just about to start inspecting in the spring. So we'll call it Hive 1. And today's date is the 1st of April. First for 17 and we've done our inspection and so here are some basic points of information that I would normally want to keep. So let's say that I've seen the queen, I saw eggs and there were four frames. There were four frames of brood in all stages. Okay, so, so that's four frames of brood in all stages. So that's eggs, young larvae, all the way up to capped brood. And then I like to know what kind of temper uh, the bees um, have. So I'd score that out to five. So I'd put T for temper, and then let's say they were really well behaved. And I'd put a four. And then sometimes you find that the bees run around on the the frames a lot um, they tend not to sit still what we really want are bees that just sit calmly on the frames and don't run around so then I would put running and again I scored them out of one to five so let's say they were running around quite a lot so we'll put R2 and then if I could see any disease in there maybe there was some chalk brood or maybe they had no disease at all I'd put D for disease and let's say there was no disease that I could see so that's five and then finally I like to look at the brood pattern to make sure that they have a nice formed nest in the middle of the brood box that the frame shows a good patch of brood and that it's uh, covered by a seam of maybe pollen and honey stores so next I would put brood pattern and let's say that this is not bad and we'll call that three and then finally I give them a rank um, 
and I use A through to E, A being the very best, and let's say that this one uh, will rank as a C, and then I'll write any comments. So let's put, um, at this time of year, and we're pretending that we're in April, that there's drone brood. And there we have it. That's a very simple, straightforward way. And as you go through the year, you can add more details and build up a picture of how the colony is doing. And you might also put that you've added supers, that you've removed supers, that you've seen queen cells, that kind of thing. Um, so that's how we started. And let's take a look at how we moved on from the cards into notebook form. Once we've got the card, um, we've got the details on there. It might have been that um, we needed to add some extra frames. And so I used to keep the, the card information going, but then I'd use a small notebook just to write down some details. So I'd write Hive 1 requires additional brood frames or Hive 1 has two supers of honey and requires an additional super. And so then we'd use the notebook to build up information for um, changes that we would need to make or any moves that we'd made or any additional equipment that we'd require for the next visit because once you write it down on the card and then leave the apiary if you've got maybe two or three apiary sites you then start to think well do i need to take the equipment to that apiary or this apiary and it can get a little bit confusing uh, so we progressed from just having a card to then using a notebook for the day-to-day -day equipment requirements and if there were maybe sugar syrup re was required, that kind of thing. So from that point, we've then progressed on to using a spreadsheet uh, and we use an iPad with a spreadsheet, so we'll show you that now. Just before we go on to the iPad, one final thing to note is that we use this little bag to put the card into because what you'll find is if you just put a card onto the crown board the bees will chew it up and you'll come back and you'll have no card left so if you leave it just in the plastic bag the bees won't chew through that and uh, ruin all your records okay so finally one of the other things that i do is i use my queen marking pen to leave uh, a quick note on the roof uh, of a hive if i want to just take a, a quick look when i've gone into the apiary um, just to see if there are any colonies that I don't need to inspect perhaps. So I might write that uh, the colony has a new queen and that there's no need to inspect for, for that week. So I simply just use the queen marking pen. We'll pretend that today is the 1st of April again. Um, I've simply put the date, the fact that it's a virgin queen, and then I want to leave this colony for two weeks, just to give a time to start laying. And you can use the pen just to write uh, notes that are relevant to your inspections. Again, it's down to you, it's what you want to do. These are your notes, and this is your beacon. So this is my, so this is my iPad setup. This is how I keep all of my records and what I've done is I've set up a sample apiary called the YouTube apiary and this is an iPad using um, Mac numbers of their spreadsheet program and what I've done is set it up so that I've got the hive number at the top and I can adjust this so I can add my hive number here and just type in the hive number so we'll say it's hive number one. So then I have my queen ID. This is queen number 27, which comes from queen number 38. And she was raised in 2015. And then I've got the inspection numbers running down the side here. Uh, the date, so let's try and zoom in on this a little bit. So I simply double tap and put in today's date and then select done. So then if I see the queen, I simply tap 
the tick box and if I see eggs I tap the tick box and bias is brewed in all stages and so let's say that we've seen eight frames of brood in all stages so that's eggs, larvae and capped brood and then the temper is um, measured in one to five so let's say that they were nice and calm and we give them a number four running around on the frame they were good so that gets a number four as well disease they had no disease so this is chalk brood sack brood, bald brood any of those kind of viruses, deformed wing virus, that kind of thing. So didn't see any disease. The brood pattern, so if I've got a nice brood pattern and I'll pop up a picture of uh, what I like to see in, in brood pattern. So let's say they were very good. And then finally the ranking, I think this colony is going to be excellent. And the ranking is really designed just to give me an idea as to whether I'll breed from them in the future. And then comments we can then type in any comments so let's say we uh, destroyed three open queen cells click done and then that's that record all sorted and then as we go on we can add more records I take my iPad uh, out into the field, into the acres with me. Uh, I've got it protected in a really solid case. It's called a Griffin Survivor case and I'll put a link down in the description below. Uh, and I've dropped it and had it covered in propolis and washing soda and it comes up clean every time and it really protects the iPad nicely. And uh, I find that the battery life in the iPad is great for a full day's inspections and uh, if I put the details in as I go then I don't have to worry about updating it uh, when I get home. And just quickly, uh, the reason I have all of those details is because I'm constantly looking at the um, productivity of the queens and whether I'm going to breed from those queens or not and this really is um, where all of that information goes to. So this is my queen assessment um, document, uh, the spreadsheet collates all of the information and uh, at the end of the day I get a final assessment score from each of the colonies that I want to consider for breeding and then those with the highest score I make a personal judgement on. And what I'll do is I'll talk more about the Queen Assessments template as we go through and talk about queen rearing in the new season. Well I hope you find that interesting, please do subscribe, hit the like button and uh, don't forget to share and uh, we'll catch up next time. Thanks for watching.